Oh, by the way, we've, we've got a nickname for you. <laughs> we call you Arthur Damas. Arthur Damas. <laughs> yeah, we call you <laughs> Arthur <laughs> Damas. So we're fucking idiots, though, because we read your newsletter. We're like, look what Arthur says. Arthur says this is going to happen. So, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not going to do it. And then it happens. So we've got this. We've, we think you've got this ability like uh, Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> we see the code. You see what's going to happen. <laughs> how do you always know what's going to happen? Like, how do you, how, how come you can read the market so well? I mean, I get a lot of things wrong. Like, I'm, I, I try to look at like longer term trends. And then my whole thing is just like take things to their logical conclusion and like try to empathize with the people who are making these decisions. Like, like these baking, all this baking stuff that's happening in the US and other markets. Like, put yourselves in the shoes of a politician, right? You wanna get reelected. What do you need to do to get reelected? Give out free shit, right? Free shit costs money. What do you do when you can't afford stuff? Print it, right? It's just standard. And if you study enough history, you see that nothing that's happening today with how, you know, you know, the ruling empires of the world are debasing their currencies, it's all happened before. It's slightly different and the circumstances might, you know, be a bit different, but this is the play that we've been running over and over and over and over again. And so if you read enough history, like, okay, I can see what they're doing. I see the, the motivations. I can see how this ends. Uh, and thankfully, now we have something like Bitcoin and this whole ecosystem where we can actually take, a, you know, take our money out of that system and say, okay, yes, this is risky. It's volatile. It's whatever. But I'm solving for this risk that happens in every single large you know, civilization over time. And maybe I'm going to be better off for taking this decision. So your 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 main thesis is like every everyone's going to print everywhere. Yes, I don't care if you're democracy, you're fascism, communism. Every single large nation state has the same construct of their banking system to a large degree. Everybody has the same problem. U.S. has too much debt. China has too much debt. Japan has too much debt. Europe has too much debt. Every major country has. You know, we've decided that we want to have less kids because we like living in cities and doing whatever. We don't live on farms, right? And so you have less people working. So if you have less humans consuming things, but you pile on a bunch of debt in the last 50 years, there's just not enough people to pay for it. And so what do you do? You print the difference. You know, or you could say, yes, yeah, some strong politician could stand up and say, you know what, everybody? I'm sorry, but your, your uncles and your fathers, they fucked you. They have took out all this debt. And unfortunately, you know, they had a good time, but now we're going to have to make some changes. And you, that social security, you're not getting that. That free college education, sorry, can't afford that anymore. That's not the message that gets you reelected. They're never going to do that. Never. They tried that in the UK. We went through this austerity period in the UK that la uh, the conservatives tried it for about two years and everyone hated them. Everyone fucking hated them. But the flip side, yeah, we had the, um, who was the Labour guy? Corbyn? Yeah, he tried to print. He tried to offer loads of shit for free, and nobody believed him. You can push it too far. For sure, no one believed him because he was saying, "I'm going to give you this for free, and that for free, and this for free," and he still didn't get elected. So he pushed it too far. But like, if you're studying history and you're saying this has all happened before, doesn't now feel particularly bad? Like one of the worst situations. Yeah, I mean, if you you know five thousand years of interest rate history, we've had it was at the peak in 2021, it was like 18 trillion US dollars of negatively yielding. Debt. That's like means you've inverted time, right? <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> these like so you're telling me these like you know economist motherfuckers figured out a way to like invert time, and we're going to like go against the natural order of things, and physics doesn't apply. Okay, sure. Um, so I, it's just obvious of what's going to happen. On a long enough time frame, right? The the short term market moves can catch you off guard, and if you're using too much leverage, your position sizing is wrong. Then yes, you're gonna have to be staring at your phone, babysitting your Bitcoin, uh, and making sure that you're reading the tea leaves correctly. But taking a longer term, higher level view, I think the path is clear. Now, whether or not Bitcoin or some of these other cryptos perform in that scenario is yet to be seen. However, the end game, we know what's going to happen, which is exactly. print money. But yeah, but do you think it? Do you think they print to the point of being unsustainable and collapse? I would say probably. Okay. Because. Because there's nothing. Because we've 
we had a 2008 crisis, right? Mm-hmm. What was that? You know, 850 billion or whatever, however many, and then you know, trillions left. You know, after that, right? Has anyone learned any lessons? COVID hits. What happens? You know, governments print a bunch of money. The central banks buy it. You know, Fed being the most egregious of, of all of them in terms of like money printing. And now they've exacerbated the problems they all know they have. It's not like these guys are dumb, right? It's very smart people. They've talked about it in many papers. We we know that we have this problem in the future. If we print all this money, how do we take it out of the system without it causing, you know, bad effects? Now they think they're they're gonna, you know, super smart and they can figure it out and they're gonna have enough time to do it. So it's like a lot of people who know they have a problem, they know they gotta fix it eventually, but they think they're so smart that they can time the market and the market's not gonna inflict pain on them. And the market's going to only act in a very linear fashion. It's not going to throw a curveball like, you know, all the regional banks failing or, you know, something else. Like somebody starts a war somewhere and price of oil goes up, right? And now you have energy inflation, which completely screws up everything, right? So there's a lot of people who know they have a problem, but they think they're smart enough to solve it. And so what kind of time frames are you working to? Do you, do you consider in weeks, years, decades? you do it all? Uh, I, I think look at more like cycles. Okay. Right? So I think this cycle is a, you know, we got this having next year, 2024. I think that's going to be a good year. I think, I don't think we get up to 70,000 this year. I think okay. next year is when, you know, we, we cross that barrier and then we get the blow off top 25, 26, and then it's Armageddon. Armageddon? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that Armageddon everywhere or in Bitcoin? I think it's more of a societal Armageddon. Now, I'm sure Bitcoin will go down too, but it's more like, okay, do we have a major war? Do we have, you know, when you have all these, print all this money and have all this social discontent around the world, you get things that happen. And it might not be the thing we all think is going to happen. This, you know, World War I was started by the assassination of some like random minor royal, right? So like, and then that, everybody's treaties triggered and boom, millions of, you know, young men died around the world. So it doesn't necessarily have to be super straightforward. It's just we have the situation. We have this tinderbox of too much money, no trust, and people trying to eke out a living for themselves. Oh, we can just laugh about it and trade some Pep coins, Pepe <laughs> coins. Did you buy Pepe coin? I have not bought any Pepe coin. You didn't buy it? I no. thought you would have bought Pepe. Coin. I got Royal Pepe's, but I don't have any Pepe coin. Oh, man. Um, so I think me and Danny are basically trying to say, what the fuck should we do? <laughs> We don't know what to do. We're not traders. Uh, we're long Bitcoin, that's for sure. We're not trading shit coins. But we worry a little bit about the choke point stuff now. Do you think about that much? Not particularly. I mean, every system, it's one of those things, right? It's If you recognize that at some point in the future, this system's untenable. What happens when systems are untenable? You know, powers that be try to close the exits, right? And so you, you can still buy Bitcoin. Okay, maybe it's not as easy as it was before. But you know you know the problem that's going to happen in the future. You know what the authorities do when they have a problem. They lock the doors. And they say, you know, stay in here, please. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty please might be a M16 in your head. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, but you can still get out now. So waiting until there's no other option, that's just like, well, what did you expect? You have an opportunity right now. Take what you can afford buy some asset that's outside of the system. Maybe that's Bitcoin, maybe that's gold, maybe it's property in a particular location, maybe it's an unlevered cash flow generating business, whatever it is. Whatever you think that's outside of the particular financial system that you might not be able to access in the near future if what you believe to be true in the future actually happens. So you're thinking financial and jurisdictional? Um, I mean, I, you gotta live somewhere. So optimize for where you are. But at, at the end of the day, right, you, you can buy Bitcoin today. It's hard. Maybe it's, it's really hard in some places. It's really easy in some places. But you can do it. And you can move to places where it's easier. Right. So do it. Stop Stop complaining that, oh, it's it's getting harder, right? Okay, well, why is it getting harder? Yes, there's a problem and they're in their own way trying to fix it. And so you should, you know, if they're going left, you go right. See, we know this, Arthur. We get it. We're doing it. Yeah, we're protecting ourselves. But I can't even convince my best friends and again, and, that, and that's the point I always make. Like most, most people will not buy Bitcoin. Period. They will go down with a sinking ship. It, that doesn't mean the price doesn't go up fantastically, right? It's a small door, a lot of money. How I many? What's I don't know. What's global MT? Hundreds of trillions, right, yeah. of debt in the world. 
Bitcoin is worth what four or five hundred billion or whatever mm. it is at, at the current market cap. Not all, no, not everyone gets saved. Nobody, not everybody makes it into Noah's Ark. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to drown. 